and it's realizing that most people live in that quadrant of urgency, not important. Mm-hmm. Not important, but it's urgent, and that's where they live. And it can become very comfortable when you live there. Like you're just oh, yeah. a person that's always putting out fires, and you're the person that always comes to the rescue, and you're the person that will drop everything and handle the situation going on. But you have to always put it back through this filter of, is this the most important thing that I could be doing in my time right, right. now? What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Sales Wolves podcast. As always, I'm your host, Tyler Harris. Co-host, Joseph Caldwell. And we are the Sales Wolves. Ow! Ow. This is episode 156 of the Sales Wolves podcast. That's amazing. It is. It's a lot. It is. In two years, it's a lot. It is a lot of podcasts. That's consistent. I've been present for every bit of 100 (laughs) of them. (laughs) About that. About that. About that. A little more. Hi, guys. So in this episode, we wanted to jump in. Um, If you've never read The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, uh, by Stephen Covey, it's probably needing to be on the top of your list. Absolutely. Uh, one of the best books, uh, business books, but really life books. Life. Um, yeah. About how to become effective. That's obviously important. Um, but it's a book that right now we have our entire organization reading. And so we wanted to go through the third habit uh, on this podcast, in which we can title the podcast the same as this habit, which is put first things first. Put the first things first. And there's an incredible quote that I wanted to read from that, that chapter. It says, putting the first things first means organizing and executing around your most important priorities. It is living and being driven by the principles you value most, not by the agendas and forces surrounding you. So when you that look at... That reminds me of not being ruled by the tyranny of the, ur- of the urgent, mm-hmm. right? Like the... The chaos is knowing exactly what to do Mm -hmm. in the different areas of your life to achieve success. Yep. And so really, if you look at it, it's about life management. (laughs) Um, When you talk about setting priorities, we all know the importance of setting priorities, but this gets a little bit more granular and really looking at the goals that you have in in each area of your life, because we all have more than one role in life. Right. Mother, father, um, husband, wife, the various things that you're committed to and are a part of in your communities and your career. Those are all different roles and those are all different goals that need to be uh, placed in each of those areas, but it's looking at prioritizing those goals in each of those roles. And so the most important thing is to figure out what the most important things are in each of those roles. Uh, and one thing I wanted to mention, you've probably all heard this analogy or heard the story of the guy that has the, the big jar. He's got a bunch of big rocks, a bunch of little rocks, and then sand, or sometimes people use water. Right. And it's or both. ultimately the story is how do, you, how do you fit it all in? And a lot of us are looking at our lives right now, and those of you listening or watching are thinking like, I have so much going on, how do I fit it all in? So how do you fit all that into the jar? Well, if you start with the sand first and then go to the little rocks and then pile the big rocks and you'll never, ever, ever, ever be able to fit it in. Ever. But it's interesting that when you do put those large rocks in first, then you sprinkle in those small rocks and they kind of fit in between all the little mm-hmm. nooks and crannies. And then you pour the water or pour the sand in and it fits in all through the even smaller little areas that are yep. open. That it all fits in. It all fits in. So what does that mean? That means you're focusing on the most important, the biggest tasks first, the biggest goals first. And in the book, he says, effective people don't spend their time on non-important activities because urgent or not, they're not important, which is so huge. Yeah, and if you take it to a granular level, if you look at it in business, or or if we just talk about sales, right? I have seen so many people that are crazy busy, crazy busy. And then I look at the actual productivity and it's next to nothing. 
Mm-hmm. Like it's like what nothing comes out of that busy. And if they audit their day, you know, whatever it is they're doing, like in sales, whatever they're selling, are they have they ironed out what the most what three most important things they do that day? Make twenty five phone calls, walk in twenty five doors, you know, what what are those? And I don't know if that's the numbers for you, but but those things happen first, mm-hmm. right? And then, and then, because that drives business long term, that drives sales long term, and and so it's it's interesting. Sometimes you can get that those things done in an hour, and sometimes it takes four, mm-hmm. right, to get whatever you need done there. But you get those things done first, and then then straighten your desk. Yeah. Then mm-hmm. then <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. saying. Oh, right? yeah. It's so funny. I've I've met some some people that are so busy they have, they've got a perfectly straight desk their car's perfectly neat uh but they didn't call a customer mm-hmm. that day yeah. like it's insane and like, it's and it's being reactive versus proactive true when you get to your office and you get to your desk and you're immediately reacting to all the things going on which there are urgent things that happen but it's looking at is this important right or have I already time blocked in enough time to get the important things done? Because just like Joseph said, it may take one hour, it may take three, four hours. It may be the only thing you get done. But if it's the important thing, right? Then the other stuff is just you know sprinkling on top. It's icing on the cake once you've got oh, but the I, important stuff. I got fourteen emails. I have to mm-hmm. answer those first. Mm-hmm. And all you're doing is avoiding the uncomfortable. What? Because yeah. most of the times. The important stuff will take you out of your comfort zone, mm-hmm. and especially if you're stretching and and you have a big goal, the important things, you know, you go, oh, I, well, I I need to do this first. I I need to I need to send this text message. I need to, well, God, I need to I need to scroll through my Facebook messages. I need to scroll through Facebook. I need to see what Tyler ate last night. I need to look <laughs> at his post. I need to do, and then all of a sudden, two hours are gone, mm-hmm. right? And none of the important things got done, but you sure were comfortable, right? And if and if comfort, when you become aware of that, if that's what you continually seek, then pain will be delivered. And the pain in that scenario, the punishment in that scenario, or the discipline that is delivered to you in that scenario, in that life experience, is no sales, no money, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's comfortable in your relationships to to not plan a date with your partner, not actually put some thought into it, not 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 try to see if there's a new restaurant in town that that has whatever it is your partner likes, not not pick them up the way that they like to be picked up or 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 whatever. It's it's comfortable to just be in that rut. A rut's nothing but a grave with both ends kicked out. Um, you should write that down. Um, and audit the ruts in your life, and 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 that's comfortable. That keeps you in that safe zone, mm-hmm. right? Even if it's a non-productive zone. And a lot of times we get addicted to the busy. We get addicted to the oh, I've got so much going on. And when you boil your life down, whether it's business, whether it's finances, whether it's personal growth, or whether it's relationships, you boil it down. What are the most important things for me to do? Three most important things for me to do every day, right? And that's what you do. And then everything else fits in around that. The small stones, the sand, the water. Um, it's, it's, but you have to break that in your own mind. Yeah. You have to break your perception. Because it takes a level of maturity to be able to do that. Because I think it's getting to the realization that progress towards the most important is far greater than completion of the unimportant. Right. And what a lot of people crave is completing a task, accomplishing right. something. So they'll go after all those small things that they, they know that they can check off the list, those small things that they know that they can accomplish for the day. So when they get to the end of the day, they can say, I finished that, I finished that, I finished that, 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 and that. But progress towards the most important thing that may not have a stamp at the end that says completed. Right. But doing those important things is the most important thing. Right. And I literally used to do that. So funny that you say that. I would have a 
a to-do list that was a page or two page or three pages long, and I would literally go through and do the ones I could do the fastest, mm -hmm. the easiest, and that I was the most comfortable with, mm -hmm. right? And then you look at that list and, God, I got 20 things done, 40 things done, 50 things done. Oh, I feel good about myself today. You should feel terrible about yourself. Mm -hmm. I did because I look back through that list and go, whoa, had I, had I trimmed this 40 things I got done and only done these two I didn't do, I would be far closer to my goal. Mm -hmm. I would be far close, but those were uncomfortable. I didn't want, nobody wants to be uncomfortable. Uncomfortable literally to your brain represents death. And, and so you have to fight that. You have to fight that. And I think I read a book one time that, that helped me with that. It was called uh, Eat, that, eat, the, frog. eat, eat the Frog First or Eat yeah. That Frog First or something like that. It was a great book, but it was talking about this very thing. Mm -hmm. You know, and so if we break this down to three steps, the first step is is identifying the most important goal in each role that you have. Right. And then the second step would be to look at your calendar for the upcoming week and to time block the amount of time and the specific time frame that you're going to put towards right. those most important goals. And then step three would be to review at the end of the week and just adjust accordingly. Like, how, did I stick to that time block? Did I have three hours on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday where I was gonna do these things and did I actually do that? Or did I allow urgency of other matters to creep in and then adjust accordingly? But when you look at the most important step is, is actually doing it. So you set that in your calendar. You have to literally think about this as like creating a fortress around those goals, like in creating a fortress around your time mm -hmm. to where you don't allow anything else in there. I remember years ago when I was a financial advisor and I would tell my assistant, like when I was making uh, cold calls, I would tell her like, you can't interrupt me for anything. Like, like if my house is burning down, like I don't care. Like during this two hours, like I am making phone calls and that is it. Like do right. not come in here. I don't care if the Pope is outside wanting to come in to meet with me. Like I'm making calls during this time. I'm making calls from eight to 10 yeah. and I'll see the Pope at 10.01. Exactly. I mean, it, it's, it's uh, it, but most people, if their house was burning down <laughs> literally, <laughs> you know, they're, what could you do? Mm -hmm. I and mean, I can't do anything about yeah. it. But the reality is most people treat a notification on their phone an email, a call from someone as though their house is burning down. Right. And that's the reality. And it's, and it's realizing that most people live in that quadrant of urgency, not important. Mm -hmm. Not important, but it's urgent, and that's where they live. And it can become very comfortable when you live there. Like you're just oh, yeah. a person that's always putting out fires, and you're the person that always comes to the rescue, and you're the person that will drop everything and handle the situation going on, but you have to always put it back through this filter of, is this the most important thing that I could be doing in my time right, right. now? It's a pretty good book. That's an incredible book. It's a pretty yeah. good book. It could, be, it could be people's, it's actually on my top 12 list. Yeah, Like I have 12, because there's 12 months in a year, and on my top, fa and rarely does a book knock one of those off and become, mm -hmm. you know, but, I mean, I'm sure it will happen it's just again. Just inching towards the Bible. Just inching. That one doesn't even fall in my top 12. That's a good book. That's like my 13th favorite. <laughs> That's awesome. I've learned a lot from that book. Yeah. Okay, um, fair enough. Yeah. I mean, it's a really good book. But, uh, but anyway, I hope this helps somebody as you're listening to this and you just want to get better in the different areas of your life, whether that's sales, whether that's business, you want to you want to bridge that gap from where you are to where you're going. This helps, this helps when you define the important things. And, and here's the thing, who you're gonna have to change you in that process because you'll become a different person. But it's getting into that gap, getting into the journey. You know, a thousand mile journey, it, it, it starts with one step. Mm -hmm. You may know where you're going, but you don't know exactly how you're gonna get there, we'll take a step. Get uncomfortable with it, right? And, and that discomfort, you'll learn about you, 
you'll adjust, you'll learn what's really important, and you'll start doing those. Those will be uncomfortable. It'll change you along the journey. And by the time you get to your goal, the goal is you never want to live there. You celebrate it when you get there, mm-hmm. right? But but you don't want to live there. You don't want to get comfortable there. And the perceptions you developed in that journey will keep, this is going to sound crazy, but they'll keep you from achieving the next goal. So you have to mm-hmm. then get uncomfortable again and stay in that zone, stay in that zone of discomfort. But this is the starting point. Most people, they don't have anything on their calendar except a few meetings in a week or five, 10, 15 meetings, and they're meeting just to meet. Mm-hmm. Uh, they don't have an objective with the meetings. And so get concentrated on doing what is most important, the hardest thing, the biggest thing, the thing that feeds that end goal and is the most uncomfortable for you because that'll change you in the process. And, and, and you ultimately achieve the goal. So being the Sales Wolves podcast, if we go back to this, this idea of wolf, when the wolf is hunting, there is no urgent matter that no. creeps in and, nope. and takes it away from the objective at hand. No. So with that, guys, this is yeah. episode 156 of the Sales Wolves podcast. As always, I'm your host, Tyler Harris. Joseph Caldwell. And we are the Sales Wolves. Yes. Uh, Ow! Woo!